I I'm excited to see how the CT side goes here for Apex. All these outs. It's always a fun one to see. The double pistols. Jacob drops in. Tries to get some information towards Dormini. He's got to be careful because, of course, as the solo lobby holds, he's got to be careful in the meantime. It's a fast play towards B. The lower site exposed. B who does take the head off of Key. Shoulders, B who. There's your second north with a third. There's no bomb plant. Nine have even attempted the C4 to go down. Ghoulies are coming in for the heavens, but naught to take. Oh, already some drawbacks being taken by Nine. Some shortcuts. I like this, Jacob. Straight into the vent. Sees that the vent dive util was deployed by Nine. Immediate reaction is to get down himself. So basically isolate the fight if they go down gonna have to basically walk into uh, into his crosshair. Jail's gonna have a really tough job on his hands right now. Only an MP9 in his hands and then four players edging in his direction. He's looking for information and yeah, I spot somebody out now. He knows, okay, decision time. Do I hang around? Do I just fall back? I like Age this. Age can't plant the bomb on ramps. So it's not always the worst that Age just to give it up and rather preserve your yeah. life. But he's trying to play to the strength of the MP9 here. I mean, I was saying I like this. I thought Nork was going to come around and support from range as well, right? So you kind of have like this crossfire set up where one player with the M4 has got it from afar. JL's got it up close. But now it is just the MP9 to try and find the frags. There's your first. But again, as you said, those angles pretty much the one and done. Your life probably best kept in the later rounds. But JL doing his job. Jacob, of course. I guess him being down the vent from the early round kind of gives them excuse to go aggressive on ramp because you already have that quick rotation coming in. Key has found Mihu, and so maybe the bomb's going to be beckoned back up towards A. Ultimately, though, Nort's going to be waiting for him. There's one, nearly a second. Kyla is very, very low, and Jacob and Stiko, unfortunately, both gamble towards B, meaning that bomb is just going to slip right in towards the A site, and they're not going to be able to deny it, which means a post-plant is now to come in. Stiko already taking a bit of damage to the molly, and still know that there's a man in the vents. Yeah, they're pulling the plug on the round off the back of that information coming through for the T side. Good good adaptation there from nine to go back up in towards the A bomb side. I think that, like, that's because Key a was able to get so much control here, push all the way in towards dead vents and lock down the A bomb site. So they just pivot back instead of committing to the B side, which actually could have been a, a, a really rough one for them with the crossfire that was set up. Stiko was taking all the attention towards the single door, and Jacob was in a prime position to shut them down as they crossed into the site. I don't think they would have cleared control room because of Stiko's positioning. So, uh, Jacob was probably rubbing his hands together, but a good pivot there from nine. Uh, and Backside have to offer. They have the better chances of winning rounds, but ultimately, as you said, their uh, economy quite strapped right now. They have to take their next step carefully. Oh, Jacob been able to edge his way in towards the container here. But the problem is, how does he get more than just the one frag? One and done, not really anything to write home about. Oh, he finds the perfect mate. timing there. Gorgeous repositioning coming through from him. Catches Goofy completely off guard. And you can just see that experience glowing on Jacob in that situation. That's so sick. Did he even sticks around for a second fight? Of course, for nine, they probably expected to find the first and then back off, right? That was at least the movement that he was suggesting. But instead, kind of loops back around, comes in behind the red box. And finds himself a second one. And of course, nine responseless. Now down to three. Menio, of course, half health from an earlier engagement as well. Doesn't exactly pose the biggest threat here, nine. 50 seconds left time is going to be a problem. And with Jacob finding a third, this round just gets worse and worse. That's his fifth kill here, Jacob. Yet to die. Looking for number six. He will get deleted. Kyla's AK delivering the exact opportunity that they needed to take. 30 seconds left, they head towards B, and actually, there's only one man towards lower here. It's JL that's tossed to hold the entirety of this site himself. This round probably isn't as done as it initially looked. Yes. As you say, because they're able to probably get in towards the B bomb site. The problem is the bomb carrier needs to get across the silo. JL's trying to lock it down right now. Only 10 seconds left from the clock. Oh my god, 9 desperately trying to find a way to get that bomb across, and eventually Kylo will expose it. For well, the next season of Challenger. So, um, yeah, they're in a, a really strong position right now, and it doesn't look like they're taking a step backwards either. This is a big gun round here for nine. I mean, it's still early days, and going down 4 1 T side of me is really not the end of the world, but this is where you want to start to make a bit of a mark. They've got the orb, they have all the utility as well. Minio, though, oh man, I mean, that's just so unfortunate. Don't even see the player just catching bullets through the smoke. 
initially they show a lot of presence outside here do nine and they just post key in position so at least they do leave somebody here and they're going to throw the wall of smoke so he's going to have a lot of room to work with right now but for the most part they're just trying to use this to draw attention I like this as well. They've gone for the L smokes, right? Which is usually indicative that you're going to take garage. But in fact, they come through and try and head towards main. Jacob's in that play all too many times before. And he's convinced that there's a second man lurking in the back lines as well. He's going to be checking out every angle. Oh, he should know that Goofy's in and around it. I mean, he's Spidey sense to single in. And indeed, he does win a second fight. That is clinical from Jacob. And now this activates JL. He's tucked in close left corner on ramp. But Kylar sees it coming. The swing denied. And a second frag to come back in favor of nine. It's a 3v3. Yeah, round very much alive right now. Bomb towards ramp. Where do they go is the question. Are they going to try and go in towards the B sites? Don't have much time left remaining. It's Nork who's trying to lock down the lower bomb site with the AWP right now. 20 seconds. They're taking they're taking their time on this one. They don't want to give the information information away until they're on the site itself, but Nork gets a favorable angle. Oh, Kylo, he wants to get this kill so damn badly before he commits to the bomb plot somehow. Nork's going to get the nose scope now. Mino's just fighting to try and stay alive, but he won't be able to... I think that's what's so cool about Counter-Strike. It's kind of like a global language, right? A universal language. Everybody can speak it if you can play the game. And, uh, yeah, trying to solve the same problems but uh, so many different solutions and not always is there just one correct one right like you can make multiple solutions work yeah i don't know i think that's a, a pretty cool topic of discussion right is that uh how to play nuke even after all this time people are unsure if you should be starting 2a or one main it's it's always nice to see Starting to note as well in this round, there's been a switch up, right? Mihu's now playing on ramp. He's stuck around for a first fight. Steeko finds a second. Molly gets the best of him. And that is a very elongated engagement. It's one in which Goofy does eventually win. Still at the cost of a three for two. Apex, a man advantage. Oh, that's really unfortunate there for Mino. He thinks he can just slink his way down the fence there. I think he would have heard Jacob drop down, but was probably hoping that Jacob would have rotated and not just turned immediately around and held the ladder. Leaves Goofy in a, a pretty awkward position right now with that bomb locked down in vents. Sick. Nork is going to polish off the round. Such a sick start. Of course, as you said, it is a CT-sided map, but the fact that they're able to sort of link up so many rounds and start to bolster such a solid economy, it does get scary here for Nine because, of course, they're on a little bit of uh, financial turmoil themselves. Event dive in this round, though, has actually caught Apex completely off guard. They do start with two towards ramp, though, and already dismissing of this investment here. Three players gone. Key stuck around the fence. He should get taken down by two. Only round we've really seen them win so far was against that bonus round where Apex had a couple MP9s. Ever since they've had a full set of weaponry, nine have yet to beat them. Have been yet to beat them. Well, are yet to beat them? Are yet to beat them. That's the one. I do find it interesting that even after all this time, we haven't actually seen Apex play against nine. Like, this is the debut matchup between these two names. JL, well, that's a great way to, to put nine in an episode in this round. They wait, try and glaze the smoke out towards ramp. Just not going to happen. There's the AK waiting on the opposite side. JL collects two. Nork, still an idea that they could be outside. Just second guessing himself that they could have crossed. He peeks back in. The AK was holding the angle, but eventually that's keep his life. 3v5. Problem is nine of them get to take departure, man. Piece by yeah. piece right now. They're not even really able to accomplish that much. I mean, they've lost three players. They've got nothing to show for it. JL just continues to claim ground here after getting two of those kills. He's up to 15 and three right now. Oh my goodness. This is a disaster. Wow. I mean, it, it doesn't feel like there's many options here for 9. I feel like a good choice might just be to... The first time he's playing Nuke with 9. I've just looked. He's played four match... Oh, excuse me. He's played it once with them before against Endpoint. So this is the second time he's getting to play Nuke I with like 9 that. squad. Fast paced round. Hudson able to get down the vent. They get that opening kill onto Jacob as well. So finally, they have something to work with. The problem is that they still only have pistols, but the bomb plant's coming through. So now some pressure's going to be shifting onto Apex for what feels like the first time here on the map. 3v5. Apex might even call this round done. I know they've got stacks of money, and I know they can afford to go for this retake. Risking two AKs and an AWP, or now just one AK and an AWP. Always going to be a difficult decision to make, especially when you're on that CT side. 
Orp leg shot is key. Now, of course, Nork's going to get charged down. Mihu left alone. And that's it, right? That is going to be a second on the board for nine. Starting to note in the start of that round, Hayes, I'm, I'm going to be taking note of, right? They, they blow open the door. So they use a nade. They blow open the door. They throw two mollies and just as many flashbangs as they physically could afford, right? And all it does is it keeps Jacob blind. And when all the time that he's blind... Coach, they blow the door wide open on the round, literally and figuratively. Can't just be a flash in the pan, though. Need to see them string a couple together off the back of that. And they've actually been able to get some decent positional control in towards Secret. They go to Secret, the first victim. JL is going to be the second man up to the plate. Takes him a while to get that first kill. Means he's easily tradable. And more frags continues to roll through here for nine. This is looking a lot better from them. 2v4. This is it, right? One round can really spin you out of control. Flips on the old banana peel here, Apex. And now uh, don't quite know what to do with themselves. 2v4 scenario always going to be a difficult one as well. They kind of have already gambled the, uh, the B plate. I mean, if they go towards A, there's no way Nork's going to try and stick his nose in in this round. Probably wants to keep the big green into the next. And so for Jacob, he's the only form of defense. Bomb being planted above him. He knows there's no denying it. And now, probably just looking for a way to escape to keep his weapon. Similar job here for Nork as well. A nine up to a third here. Hayes, you said, you know, 12-3 health probably isn't justifiable, but... The fact that Nine have now got three and starting to piece a lot more together, I think it's safe to say we're going to be expecting a little bit more out of them. And maybe, you know, 10-5, 11-4, a massive push, but definitely 10-5 feels like a more suitable scoreline now. Yeah, absolutely. And attainable as well, right? I mean, they're looking like a completely... Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Nork's like, uh, yeah, I, I might not want to do that as well. Were they potentially going there for a ninja? It looked like maybe they were both going to go up the ladder and Nork tries to cover him. And none of these three rounds that Apex have lost have actually been even remotely close. They've just been getting destroyed in all of these rounds. They're consistently losing these opening picks. And then Nine are just having free reign thereafter. They've had quite a lot of aggression to try and find that opening frag in these past few rounds so far. And that's exactly what Key is doing towards outside here as well. Looks like they send somebody aggressively to find an early opening engagement, get them the kill, and then they just slow it down after that and try and use that advantage. It's an interesting style on Nuke because there aren't many options for the T side, but there are a few. And they're difficult to make work, but if you can, then you, you can get those early engagements. You can push towards outside or squeaky or hut or ramp and look for an early fight here or there to get that opening pick. But right now, they're just slowing things down and going for contact. They've been able to creep themselves out of squeaky door right now. Stiko's on the angle though, spots the player, but he gets taken down by Goofy. Now he needs his teammates to come into the equation. Miku able to activate, but he's only good for a single kill. JL, the next man up to the plate. That's a gorgeous map coming through from Montemino. A bit of a burst fire there. Three versus two is the name of the game. And finally, Apex find themselves in a favorable position. Oh, Tudson hits the shot, but Jacob has a trade. Not too sure if he spotted the bomb. I mean, either way, he smoked it off completely. So now, Key's going to have to run into it to get it. And there's a player playing on either side, so it's just going to get even more difficult now. Swings out. Jacob has the read. That's 10 on the board for Apex. That's more like it, you know? Although that round's a lot closer than fire. And he won oh the, my the giveaway. Oh, my God. No so, yeah, ways. That, was, that was criminal. But obviously, back then, that, that was a few thousand dollars. Now, it's like a few tens of thousands of dollars. So, things have changed. He doesn't have it, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, I, that's probably, like, as close to a, a giveaway win I've ever had. as like a friend won, like, a massive amount of money at the end of the year. But, yeah, I don't, I don't think I've ever won it myself. Which is crazy, by the way. Like, deep the fact that he's won a, a Karambit Sapphire at the end of I the know. year. It's like, what a, what, a sick, what a sick way to end the year. <laughs> That's an absolutely insane giveaway. Certainly, uh, yeah, mine pales in comparison. Either way, Goofy will find the opening kill here. Final round of this first half. Nine looking to try and grab a fifth to take into that CT side. They've had a really good conversion rate in these rounds that they've been able to find the opening picks. But Jacob does answer back elsewhere on the map to bring it back into even keel. And Nine don't really have much to show for this. I mean, a couple players towards outside trying to edge their way forward, but no obvious options here in the round as of yet. I mean, in a 4v4, Nine probably want to find themselves another frag before they commit completely to something. Or if they do, they're going to have to make sure someone steps up to the pedestal a little bit more than most. The Menio will find Nork. That's probably the way that you want to get in. Oh my. Look at this gamble. Yeah, it's massive. 
I mean, you have to go for it, right? In a 3v4, last of the half, can't really afford to just sit back and relax. What do I think of a way it to might actually in. pay off. Oh might, my god. It might They're indeed. actually going down ramping towards the B-bomb side. Like, oh. the worst case scenario for nine. This is where all three, three players for Apex reside. Mihu and Jacob able to get the kills. Mihu's pretty much just sealed the deal. Locked in the round. Wow. Only... And dusted. Because nine are going to be on a force buy. Then they're on an eco. That's like 13-4, you know? And there's no way you're getting back into the game from that scoreline. Especially when you consider what good form Apex have been in lately. They reverse swept their grand final yesterday after going down 2-0. They started that grand final with the 1-0 map disadvantage as well. And they were able to come back and win 3-2. So it just shows this team have a huge amount of tenacity and depth to them at the moment. So, yeah. Like you say, probably going to be a bridge too far if Nine aren't able to win the pistol. But they get off to the perfect start. Oh, brilliant response though from Steeco. As you said, just when they get the step ahead... Actually fall a little bit behind because, I mean, look at the control that they've given up, right? It's three players down towards lower. They come up the vents and Goofy finds three. Sneaker will trade, trying to make it more, but Goofy finds four with the duels and, and get that molly smoke double flashbang set up or what have you. It is, uh, it is difficult, of course, to call. But they seem confident in this weaponry that they can win a round. So they will head to do exactly that. Nine. With only the single man on ramp, as you can see, Menio was thinking about heading down. Keys found a double, though. What a way to start the round already. 5v3. Apex is just not finding a way in here on this T side. It's looking scary now. Yeah, and that was actually just him making moves towards outside, imposing himself, not afraid to take gunfights. We saw Jacob doing it on his side, uh, on Apex's T side, but what a great way here for Key to kick off the round for his team. Nork finally able to answer back with the frag, but the damage is done. Round looks almost irrecoverable. Oh. Gonna require some crazy shots, and, and Steeko's already taken damage. Sure, not gets the play, but they're never gonna be expecting key as well in a number of their players. So, this is this is looking a bit touch and go for Apex. What's the response? Fast pace stays towards ramp. Touch there with the AWP as well. Goes one and done. There's more where that came from though for nine. And look at this, they box him in completely. I mean, Nork's spidey senses are tingling, but ultimately. There you go. Kyla's got lobby. Thank you very much. Now you're forced to either go hell or down towards B. And either of those results won't be looking too good for them. Because they've double stacked the lower side. And on top of that as well, Kyla from lobby. One man holding heaven, I do believe, from the open vent. That is key. This gets really difficult here, Hayes. Because, I mean, what do you do in this scenario for Apex? I mean, realistically, you could loop back around. Maybe go through main and then head out towards A. Yeah. Will they let them simmer on this idea, though? Actually, not a, not a terrible position to be in. There you go. Starting to wander around a little bit more. Now they're going to have a peek in maybe towards the A side of things. Maybe they go down secret. You know, the uh, the opportunities are certainly there. Nine have left holes in their defense. Maybe well, That's not. exactly it. The only way here for Apex to win the round is just through wow. the virtue of the amount of time that's left on the clock. But Key reads the situation perfectly. Starts to pay a bit of attention towards outside. And a couple of players walk into his cross there. He happily obliges. Apex have been uh, covering some distance here in this round so far, it's safe to say. Finally, they will be making their way up the ladder in towards the A-bomb side. Nobody from the CT is going to be able to do anything about this immediately. I mean, Kyla's in position, so he will hear the plant once it comes through. But Apex will still have a pretty decent crack at this. I mean, this is actually probably the best position that they've been in so far here on this T side. They got a bomb plan out of this one. Jacob does get a first. How's Nort in the clutch? Does he dare peek? He does. Doesn't check the close vent angle. Didn't expect Kyla to be sitting so deep on the site. And ultimately, he'll pick up the AWP. And that is going to be a ninth on the board. Nearly said 12th then. But no, Apex denied there, of course. And Nine now making use of their CT set. Winning rounds here. All that hard work in the first half about to be negated. Oh, Kyla is going to be in, in a forward position there. Just behind the molly, catch the speaker of guard. Another opening kill coming through for the CT side. Look how many moves they're making right now, man. Pushing through ramp, contesting squeaky door. I like it. And aggression here, nine towards outside. A flashbang blinding both parties. Be you can hear all the steps, and now pulls the trigger back turn to main. But he was confident that was the main player. 
That is going to be a second in frag, but look at Menio. All this control towards lobby. It's all an illusion because Nork's going to be holding for the closed door push. They know. Let's see. Could have pushed ramp. Could be in hut. JL. Falls to the orb of Tudson. Nork does get, uh, eventually get his trade. Excuse me. And there you have it. The pieces fall into place. A 3v1. This is looking a lot more likely now for Apex. Starting to put some massive rounds on the board. Yeah, ultimately punishing some of the aggression coming through from 9. Tudson, though, is still alive and kicking. Going to give this one his best crack. Gets the kill onto me, who realizes actually what's going on. That it is going to be the B-bomb that he needs to end up towards. Gets ahead of the molly as well, but Nork will just finish him off with the rifle. Let's have a deeper look towards outside. Breaking the glass below him. Emilio might actually have to use it as his escape route. Because look how fast this play is from Apex. They are sending it towards B. Three, four, all five players now committing towards lower. Goofy going to find the opening frag to Stiko. Minio going to get flashed in. Wants to check out every angle. And that's a sick one from Key. Menio, it's an easy frag. Key will find the follow-up. Unstrews the M4, just giving and Jacob a chance in this one. But it's Key to shut him down. Brilliant job. Apex will find another roadblock here as Tudson finds the last. It's 12-10. Oh, man. I mean, head right off of Key. That's a great way to earn that extra man advantage. And now they're going to be pivoting in towards the A bomb side. Goofy, though, looking to make a bit of a mark here. Able to find a frag and get himself out alive, but... He's not the healthiest right now. Bomb plant going to come through and nine have to complete a retake if they're going to win this round. Tyson goes up the vent, knows that Jacob's there, but it doesn't matter. 25, 14 to 10. Apex. I mean, still a lot on their plates. We know the CT side is quite a harsh one. Especially oh, when man. Your, your chips are to the middle of the felt, but then again... Oh, it does get scary. It does get very, very scary. Because you know, it's been so on and off this CT side. Hot and cold. Where it's looked good, it's looked amazing for nine. And winning this round here certainly will be a plus. And definitely will put a spanner in the works here for Apex. They've already burnt half of the round here, though. Hey, they've uh, got it down to the final minute. And Key with the opening frag. That's a promising opportunity now for nine to take 11. Yeah, that's a lot of information gleaned there for him as well as to what's going on towards outside. But in the meantime, some control has been taken from Apex. JL lurks his way through ramp. He could make his way up the ladder. I'm not sure if actually anybody from 9 is aware of this being a, a potential. He's actually decided against going up heaven though. He's wrapping his entire way through outside. He's trying to get his teammates to wait as long as they possibly can before they execute in towards the safe bomb site. Finally, JL's going to be able to come through the mouth. He'll be able to get key on top of the hut. There we go. It's a sea of orange in the kill feed. Apex reigns supreme. Even though they lose that opening frag, JL is able to help them unlock the round. Yes, yeah, it's now looking good, isn't it? For Apex, you go from the man down and you fight your ground. It's Nork, Stiko and JL all winning their gunfights as JL finds a second as well. Menio left in such a difficult spot because, of course, you want to save your gun because you know you've got no chance in this round. But part of you just wants to fight, right? Because you know losing this one, you have to play for overtime. Your team's got no money, but he knows it's just best kept to the next, especially when he's without a kit. Me, who's got him down, though. The side swipe comes in. Get themselves back into the driver's seat, but they've done that here on new T side. And now they've got themselves their best opportunity to win the map considering the weapons that Nine have. It's not going to get easier than this round. And you can just tell by the buy that it's a desperation investment. They've got one kit between five of them. Kyla, if he goes down, he's going to have to share the love. Tudson, off to a good start, though, with the scout. It's very important, of course, to note that in the last round, Apex did come back from the 4v5. This time, Nine are probably hoping for a different outcome. And Apex have got five rounds to work with here as well, so it's not even like they have to get it done in the here and now. I want the lobby control, and by the looks of things, they're going to be just gifted it. No, no, Apex. Nobody home unless, you know, Stiko continues to fight from the back lines here. This does Problem give is that a Apex, massive chance, yeah. They've been making moves in the meantime. There's been a lot of space, and they've been able to get themselves in towards mouth, and you can see that Kyle is watching for it, but he's only got a Desert Eagle on the angle. He's lost his life out, and there's nobody else on the safe bomb site right now. Sure, Minio wants to peek in, but he's got a mere MP7. Me who rips his head right off. And while they had lobby control, doesn't look like it's going to make much of a difference at the end of the day. At least Hudson gets another with that scout, and he gets in the mix as well. Okay, this round looks a lot more doable. AK picked up. Sure, the bot's going to come through, or is it? No, no. no. Me who's forced off of it. This round has been flipped on its head, and nine have somehow been able to get themselves back in contention. Not only that, but they should win the round from here. 
I mean, JL's got to clutch it 1v2. Should know there's a second man in and around. Cypher doesn't expect us when you sign up using our code. Very nice from them to do so. Get on it while you can. 15 11. Still on that point. The a harsher climate to fight within. And already Jake can find in the first frag. This is looking better for Apex. He has been the victim in the previous two rounds before this. The man who's fallen first. Now he's the one who's been able to get that opening kill. Keeping up with this approach. Continues to back his game. And this time it does net him that kill. And he's not going to continue to persist off the back of that as well actually. He just disengages and joins up with his teammates in towards lobby. Pressure mounts here on nine. Yeah. I mean, how late do they leave it before they go looking for, for a 4v4? You know, how... How late do they leave it before someone gets aggressive? That's a great flashbang, but doesn't clear Steeko. Oh, Kyla. How do you have just run a little bit deeper? Check to his right. That's such an easy frag. But now that whole angle is going to be overlooked, right? Hudson's played passively on ramp. He is expecting his teammate to do most of the heavy lifting. Problem is, Minio's been spotted oh, out. And no. actually, that's the first frag. Hudson does get the trade, but nine points of health. Has to back away. Steeko and uh, Miku, excuse me, both with frags. And it is all down to Goofy. 1v4. Finds the first, but three more to go here. Swings that in the is... door. Flash goes through. Oh. Done and done.